Hi guys, how are you? I hope you're well, I hope you're doing well. So, um, remember when I talked to you about parents who, I gotta be careful, I have insect spray on my legs. I gotta be careful, okay. Remember I told you that um, parents who overindulge their children can make their children basically mentally ill to where they cannot function, they cannot, they cannot have relationships with other people, those relationships are unhealthy, um, they develop rage inside, they can be prone to do some very violent behavior, so, you know, overindulgence doesn't ever result in good things, alright, it's just not a good thing. So, trauma is not just, you know, um, beatings all the time and abuse and alcoholism and, you know, that whole thing. Trauma can also be making a bubble around this individual, giving them everything they want, catering to their every whimper. That does not prepare them for the real world because, as I've said many times, the real world is not, is not going to cater to you like that. So you they develop maladaptive behaviors. Okay? So this one person who was catered to by her parents, her parents were basically helicopter parents. They're helicopter parents. They're always flying over her, hovering above her. And they're always catering to her every whimper, every want. Um, they built her a house. They, they also built a guest home next to the main house. And, um, you know, they just cannot leave her alone. And so anytime, she, they're the type of parents that if she got into a fight at school because somebody was messing with her, so she retaliated. No, let's, let's. Let's rewind. She picked a fight with somebody because she felt like picking a fight. So she was in the wrong. So the two of them are fighting and the parents come and defend the daughter. That's the type of sick, twisted dynamics that this person grew up with. And even as a so-called adult, they still treat her like a child and they still run to her every beck and call, which stifles the person's growth and they stop developing and so they're stuck in the mindset of when the trauma started and overindulgence is abuse it is okay and some of these people have lost all their mind because of it so we're going to go to the story of lucy letby okay Miss, I got my butt kissed my whole life. Lucy Letby, she's in the UK. Okay. She was born January 4th, 1990. She's a British serial killer and former neonatal nurse who murdered at least seven and attempted to murder at least six other infants in her care between June 2015 and June 2016. Okay. So she's 33, she's a neonatal nurse, she murdered seven and tried to murder seven more. Criminal penalty was 14 life sentences, so it's basically a whole life order. In the UK, a whole life is your entire life, you'll never get out of prison alive. Your entire, the rest of your life is going to be in prison, okay? Because they don't have the death penalty, which I would have liked to see her get. But the law babies women, they don't wanna they don't wanna hurt their little feelings by putting them to death. We just don't want to do that. You got a lot more sympathy for that person than they had for their victims. Anyway. So there were thirteen victims, seven deaths, and six injuries, some of which were resulted what she did was uh, resulted in brain damage. She injected air into their system in, the, in their IVs, or she um, injected them, overdosed with them with insulin. 
span of crimes were 2015 to 2016. And you know what? That may not be true. It may be a lot more than that, a lot longer than that. And she was practicing murdering babies way before 2015. There's a strong possibility. But they didn't get hip to it until 2000, until recently, I guess. No, no, my bad. She was apprehended July 3rd, 2018. She is imprisoned at HM Prison Low Newton. And like I said, this is in the in the UK. Suspe okay, so I don't know if this is going to talk about it, but in case it doesn't, let me go ahead and bring it up before I forget. Because <laughs> y'all know me. <laughs> um, doctors were, th were suspicious that Whenever these infants died, they always died under her care. So they talked to senior management and this and that. And her father, who her parents are enablers, in case you haven't figured that out. Her father came storming over there and threw a fit. And you make those doctors apologize to my daughter and ba 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 da, da, da. So they were forced to apologize. And guess what? She was dead wrong because she was a serial killer. There are some things daddy and mummy cannot save you from, and that's prison and whatever happens to you in prison. You will be on your own. You will not be surrounded by your parents anymore. You're going to have to actually be a five, you know, no longer be a five-year-old. You're going to have to be an adult for the first time in your life. And what they do to her in prison, that's on you. I would have zero sympathy no matter what they did. Anyway. Suspicions rose after an outbreak of unexpected collapses and in infant deaths between two, June of 2015 and June of 2016 at the Countess of Chester Hospital. Starting around the same time, let be qualified to work with children in the intensive care unit. Concerns were raised that let be was always on duty during these incidents. Okay. As soon as Letby was removed from duties to, in June of 2016, the incidents stopped. Letby was charged in November 2020 with eight counts of murder and ten counts of attempted murder. Her trial lasted from October 2022 to August 2023. During the trial, it was revealed that Let, Letby's methods included injecting the infants with air or insulin, overfeeding them or physically assaulting them let me also stole over 250 confidential documents relating to the children's care to keep as mementos of her crimes and falsified patient records to avert suspicion on 21 August 2023, Letby was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order. She is the most prolific serial killer of children in modern British history. Her decision not to attend her sentencing hearing prompted renewed calls for the most serious of criminals to be compelled by law to appear in court before the victim's families. Now in America, that don't fly. You're not going to sit up there talking about, I don't want to hear what the family has to say. Uh, I'm not going to court. That don't happen in the U.S., so I don't know what, what this is. It's just kind of weird to me. After the convention, after the convictions, the Cheshire Const Constabulary, Constabulary stated that they believe she may have claimed more victims including at Liverpool Women's Hospital, where two babies died while Letby was training there. Uh, let's see. That talks about her... her, um... Carrying a wide range of bedrooms. She's just uh, a horrible person. 
She's an absolutely horrible, horrific individual. And, you know, some people are very sick in the sense of they attach themselves surgically to their children and smother them to where they cannot function on their own. That you're, you're stifling their independence, you're stifling their ability to handle problems in life, any type of issues, whether it's daily things that may happen or any type of issue period, you know, you, you over baby them and you stifle their growth and it causes them to develop rage. It causes them to develop rage. Any incident that you could think of either criminally, you know, pertaining to criminal behavior or in your personal life where you see somebody, their parents are catered to them and catered to them and catered to them. That usually never, you know, a lot of times that does not end in good places. It, the, the child develops anger and becomes a very angry adult. And you would think that somebody being catered to all the time you would think that they would be happy, but they're angry, and they stay angry, and they become angry adults, and they have a bitter attitude about everything. They're just, they're just angry. And I told you before that my ex, his sister was the golden child. So she was catered to and catered to and worshipped and oh my god, she could do no wrong. And that's a load of BS. And she had she was successful in her career. She actually worked for the Pentagon. But she's an angry individual. Very angry. Hostile, angry. You know. Um yeah. And like I told you guys before, I knew of a friend who, I do believe the reason his mom glued herself, she has three children, they're all adults now. One of them is still a child mentally, but moving right along. Um, he and I were friends for 10 years, and we talked about having more than a friendship as in a future, but he could never do that because he's married to his mother. And what happened with her was her dad abandoned them when they were little. Her and her siblings when they were little. And so she, he, her dad got involved with this woman later in life. And um, that woman basically told him, we are not having a future until you work out, you mend the fences between your kids. You, you, gotta, you gotta make it right with your kids or else we can't get, have a future. And I really commend her for doing that because a lot of women don't care. As long as I get this man and as long as I get a ring on my finger, because that cures everything, which it does not. But women, they're starting to get hip to that now. But marriage can make your life worse if you marry the wrong person. Trust me, I know. Um, so he mended fences, but the psychological damage was too deep at that point. And so his mother, his daughter, which be, was my friend's mother, she glued herself to her son because her, she had three kids. The two girls are set in their ways and they're going to do what they became normal adults. I'm going to make decisions for my life without my parents input because I'm a grown up so I'm gonna make grown up decisions however the son was easiest to manipulate and he's the youngest and has a softer heart so she the mother targeted him and demanded his loyalty from when he was little they are enmeshed they are locked together he cannot function without his mother. She has demanded his loyalty ever since he was little. So he's had on-the-job training that your whole world revolves around your mother. Enmeshment. Uh, locked into a child's mentality. He lives in their basement. Sleeps on a twin-size bed like a child would. 
and he's happier than a fat rat in a cheese factory. He will never leave his parents' side. He will always live with them until they die or one dies and the other one's in a nursing home. He's going to be screwed because he can't function on his own. He has to have his parents. He has to have mommy in particular. Cannot have uh, healthy relationships with other people. And, you know, I told you guys about him before. He comes on to women, and when they respond, he's he jets out of there. He, he's like, do, 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 do. he just needed to know that you were interested. And then he runs away. He was engaged before, and I think that he's not going to tell this, and he probably hasn't made the connection. But she knew his fiance quotation marks knew that he was never going to leave mommy's side he could never live without mommy now if you get married to him and y'all live with mommy that would be ideal because he got both his wives living there no no look here grown women are not going to be cool with that i'm just telling you so they targeted the youngest child and the enmeshment and the um what is the word Basically, his psychological, emotional growth has been stunted ever since he was made to be his mother's care, caretaker, carekeeper, whatever the hell you want to call it. And he's been dedicated to her ever since, which is totally crazy. Does he realize he's doing that? Probably not. Can he ever break from it? Probably not. Not unless he goes to comprehensive therapy. And mommy probably wouldn't be okay with that because she likes the fact that he's, his growth has been stifled. <sighs> anyway, so childhood is crucial and how you develop as a, as a adult, it's crucial. And, um, if you're fortunate, you will not be the way your parents trained you to be. You will be your own person and you will grow in spite of them. And in some cases, the adult who developed normally regardless of how they were raised, which is a miracle in itself, they may even cut the parents off because the parents are still trying to guilt them into... You need to take care of me. You look. You need to look out for me. Why are you so selfish? Why are you trying to get your own place? You can just stay with me. Okay? And it's just sick and dysfunctional. And, you know, if having children was contingent upon having strong mental health, there would be no one left. There'd be no one left. All it requires is two people that want to jump each other's bones and you got two knuckleheads that have kids that are knuckleheads because they make sure those kids are knuckleheads. So anyway, people are saying, and, and, and I've said this before and I'll keep saying it until people get it. They're shocked at what she's done. I can't even, you know... I can't even begin to wrap my brain around the type of emotional agony that this woman has put these families through. Uh, one of the families was triplets, identical triplets. And she killed all three of them. Another was a set of twins. She killed both of them. She was just on a, on a roll. And so many people, whether it comes to this type of situation, serial killer, or, you know, sexual assault, or scamming people out of every dime they have, or whatever the crime is that causes horrific pain, especially in this particular situation, because it's so indescribably heinous and and you know it it, it just it, 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 there's no emotions to describe 
the agony that those families have been through because of her. So, but it does prompt the question, not with me, but with a lot of people, why, why, why? What's the motive? Why? Because she's always gotten away with everything. So much of her life was out of control because her parents dominated her and catered to her every whimper. They rolled out the red carpet for her. And she had no control over her own life. They would not allow her to have control over her own life. So a person a lot of times becomes a narcissist because they didn't have control of their life growing up. But they do have control over what they do in their adult life. And because, so you have overwhelming desire, uncontrollable desire to have control as well as anger and rage built up because you were suppressed and not allowed to grow naturally and become your own person. So between the incessant need for control and the rage, you combine those together, we got serious problems. And a lot of people say, why? Why would anybody do that? Why would you do that to innocent babies? Um, why would anyone take anyone's life? There's a simple answer for that. There's a couple answers for that. One, because they can. Because they can. And because they had an overwhelming desire to be the boss, to be in control. I didn't have control of my childhood, but by God, I got control now. And I'm going to make people obey me. and Or I'm going to target people who have no choice in the matter. What is the ultimate power? The ultimate power is to decide who lives and who doesn't. That is the ultimate power. Okay? And then... You've got her childhood that caused all of this in addition to mental illness. Her brain did not form correctly. Okay, so chances are strongly, highly possible that she is a narcissist, that she is probably a sociopath or a psychopath. But there are overlapping features between narcissism and psychopathy. Okay, overlapping features between... I don't think she's a psychopath. I think she's a narcissistic sociopath. Um, psychopaths are born this way, as I've told you before, narcissists and sociopaths become that way as a result of their childhood. So she does it because she can, it gives her the ultimate power. I decide who lives and who doesn't. There was another nurse who did the same thing. She would kill patients randomly. And she has absolutely zero concern and zero, who cares? Like, so what? You kill people, so what? You know, she, she doesn't care about this. And so I remember the de detective asking her, why, why did you kill, you know, this particular patient? And she had a nonchalant answer. She was like, but well, she was getting on my nerves. She had too many demands and she was getting on my nerves. So you're trying to use a normal logic, which is you don't run around killing people, okay? You're using a normal logic to an illogical situation, and you're wondering why. Your brain is not equivalent to this person's brain. Your logic does not equal this person's logic. Because most people do not have the desire to be in control of other people. That's a sign of mental illness in itself, that you have to dominate somebody else. That's a sign of mental illness within itself. And you cannot come, with, come up with a logical explanation for a person's brain who, that is far from logical. You just can't. They did it because they can. Why do men terminate their their partners? Because they can. 
Why do women sometimes kill their partners? Because they can. Why did Eileen Warnos do what she did? And I think, I don't really know what her history is. I, I suspect, I could be wrong, but I, she, she was nuttier than a Christmas fruitcake, too. And, oh my God. I wondered, she, she was a prostitute and she eliminated quite a few of her Johns. And I, it makes me wonder if she was assaulted or abused by men growing up. Because she had a tremendous amount of anger and a tremendous amount of rage. So, I don't know. And she was drawn to women. She wasn't a lesbian relationship um, at one point. And she wasn't mean to her, so far as I know. Ah, uh, what am I doing? I can't spell. Here we go. Her name is spelled so unusually. Um, she was executed. Let's see. She was doing street prostitution along the highways in Florida. This is Eileen. Warnos, she was, whoo, I mean, whoo. She shot a bunch of men and robbed them. Seven of them. She claimed that they, they either assaulted her or attempted to assault her. And that the homicides of the men were committed in self-defense. No, no, that's not true. She's full of crap. She was executed on October 9th by lethal injection after spending more than 10 years on Florida's death row. I'm surprised because normally they, they really don't want to uh, execute women. I don't know why, but they don't. They just don't. It's weird that they that women get a softer sentence. I, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. All right. She was cremated, ashes scattered in Fostoria. Tuscola County, Michigan. She had a bunch of uh, alien um, aliases. Louis Gratz Fell. Partners Tyria Moore until 91, 1991. Six counts of first degree murder. Six death sentences. Seven victims. Span of crimes for Eileen Warnos was November 3rd. 30th, 1989 to November 19 of 1990. Weapon that she used was a high standard 22 revolver. She met, she never met her father. I'm curious as to what caused her to become so angry at men. All right. So we're going to figure it out. Her father was later sentenced to life imprisonment for kidnapping and assaulting a seven-year-old girl. Her father was diagnosed with schizophrenia. He ended himself by hanging in prison on January 30th, 1969. Oh, well, here's where we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. When Warnos was almost four years old, Diane, the mother, abandoned her children, leaving them with their maternal grandparents, Lori and Britta Warnos, both alcoholics, who legally adopted Keith and Eileen on March 18th of 1960. Okay, so they're not really in a position, they're older, right? And they're not really in a position to take care of her, and they can't even take care of themselves, they're both alcoholics. All right, I gotta get off here. Okay. Um, anyway, she, be she began sexual activity at the age of 11, exchanging that for cigarettes, drugs, and food. She also had relationships, sexual relationship with her brother. Her alcoholic grandfather sexually assaulted and beat beaten her and had beaten her when she was a child. Before beating her, he would force her to strip out of her clothes. In 1970, at age 14, she became pregnant, having been raped by... A family friend. She gave birth to a boy at a home for unwed mothers. The child was placed up for adoption. A few months after her son was born, she dropped out of school. Her grandmother died of liver failure. 
and then when she was 15, her grandfather threw her out of the house. She'd been living in the woods near her old home and supported herself through prostitution. So if you wondered, remember I told you I wondered if she had some type of assault growing up. There you go. There you have it. That explains everything. Turns this person into a rageful monster. Rageful monster. Overindulgence is abusive too. Overindulgence is abusive too. All right? You guys take care. Much love. And I'll talk to you next time.